What an awesome beginning. Friends, to think in Genesis 1, God writes about creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And he called the darkness night. It was evening. And it was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water and separated it from the water above the vault. And it was so. And God called the vault sky and it was evening and it was morning the second day. Wow, this creation story of God is profound. And firstly, God made us for relationship. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth, and now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God created. My mother is an artist. She paints. And underneath her paintings, she signs her name. She's got a relationship, a deep relationship <laughs> with her paintings. I remember the first paintings that she sold to her colleagues. Uh, she remembers what she created, the head, heart, art. She remembers well. She remembers when a doctor, remembered when a doctor came into her house and said, I need this for my practice. The relationship between her and, and her signature gives worth and value to this painting. Imagine you have a painting in your house signed by Picasso or Rembrandt or Michelangelo. The worth of that, what will that picture be worth? And so much more God's signature on your life. The worth that you get because God created you. God created. God created for relationship. Father, Son, Holy Spirit deep in relationship, full of love, and love needs to flow, and relationship needs to flow in and through creation. And God created, created little imago days, little images of Him in us, deeply aware and deeply in, deep in relationship with His creation. Isn't it amazing that God knows you by name, and God created you for a purpose, for all the deep questions in life that you might have, for love and relationship to flow. How can we explore this word more to understand God's creation, God's cre the creator? I phoned and found a friend of mine, Professor David Block, a renowned astronomer, and applied mathematician. Professor Block, it's awesome to have you with us. Always a joy to minister with you, Henrik. Always look up. A very warm welcome to each of our precious viewers. It's a question of Genesis. It's a question of creation. It's a question of beginnings. In our very first slide, we see the earth the pale blue dot. And we see the Hubble Space Telescope in orbit about the Earth. Three questions come to the fore in the next slide. We see here the planet Earth. And on the planet Earth, there are three questions which spring forth in my neurophysiological processes. And they are as follows. Why are we here? Where do we come from? And most importantly, where are we going? And I think those three questions epitomize the walk of billions of people on the planet Earth. In our next image, we see the planet Saturn. 
Now, Saturn is a most majestic planet with its incredible and majestic system of rings. In fact, telescopic after telescopic observation, as in the next slide, shows the grandeur, shows the splendor of Saturn. But you know, beloved, there's something much more than simply a mere creation. It is, as Henrik has said in his opening, it is a head, heart, and art connection. Yes, God, the masterful artist, has created Saturn with its beautiful system of rings. And in the next image, and I show you Saturn and the little Earth is arrowed. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Asked the psalmist. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him. It is an exploration. It is a question of Genesis. It is, after all, a question of profound beginnings. In this next image, you see Saturn with its glorious system of rings. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man, what is immense, what is man, that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man, that thou visitest him. In this image, a spectacular image of the sun, you see our writhing, seething, closest star. The temperature at the center of the sun is 16 million degrees centigrade, which means that you can literally bake, fry, and boil simultaneously. And one flame on the sun is around 40 Earth diameters across. A glorious creation, a profound creation, but created for relationship. In fact, if you look at the next image of the sun, you can see the earth to scale. And the, again, the earth seems so minute compared to the grandeur of even our closest star, the sun. But God made two great lights, the greater light, the sun to rule the day, and the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. In the next slide are our three most profound questions. And here you see an image of me with Professor Stephen Hawking, who is regarded as the second Einstein, one of the greatest physicists who ever lived. And he asked these three questions. Why are we here? Why are we here, beloved viewer? Where do we come from? And where are we going? In the next image is a beautiful view of the Pleiades star cluster. Now, beloved, the Pleiades star cluster is mentioned in the book of Job. And Job, despite all his misery and being covered from head to toe in boils and feeling the angst, the Freudian angst of remorse, despair, and depression, God says to Job, Job, can you make the Pleiades star cluster seen on your screen? How wonderful. It's the head connection. It's the art connection. But moreover, it's the heart connection. God is a masterful, the masterful artist. In the next slide is an image of part of a 100,000 million stars. If you had to count one star per second in this image, you would count for 2,500 years. You're looking at over 10 to the power of 11 stars, close to 10 to the 12, a million, million stars. But he calleth the stars by name. He calleth the stars by name. But then, but then he healeth the broken. In heart. Oh, how wonderful in Psalm 147, he calleth the stars by name, but he healeth the broken in heart. In the next image, the stars are so manifest that they look like grains of veritable grains of sand on a beach. So numerous are the stars. 
And again, what springs to mind is this. The heavens, the veritable heavens, declare the glory of God. I say it again. The heavens are not simply inanimate, but in a very real sense. The psalmist David impregnates this so magnificently. The heavens declare not only knowledge about God, but the veritable glory. The heavens declare the glory of God. A most interesting quote I came across, and I'd love to share it with you. It's written by Herman Melville from Moby Dick, and I quote, He saw God's foot, he saw God's foot upon the treadle of the loom and spoke it. And thereafter his shipmates called him mad. So man's insanity is heaven sense. So man's insanity is heaven sense. I urge you, beloved, today to recapture the wonder in your life and in my life. I urge you today, beloved, to recapture the head, the heart, and the art connection. So many of us live in a mechanistic world driven by iPhones and social media, but we have to recapture the still small voice of God, beloved, which says this is the way walking in it. And here in this slide, we see the horse-head nebula. And in the next slide, a close-up of the horse-head nebula. Just one or two astronomical facts here is that you're looking at vast gargantuan pillars of cosmic dust. What's so special about that? People ask, they say, Prof Block, what's so special about cosmic dust? Well, it's the stuff of which you and I are made. In Genesis, we read, and God created man from the dust of the earth. This is the stuff of which every viewer is made, carbon-based stardust. And the temperature of these little dust grains are around minus 253 degrees centigrade, around 20 degrees above absolute zero or zero degrees Kelvin. But you see, God has instituted everything you and I need for life. Jesus says, I am come that he might have life and life more abundantly. You are made of the stuff cooked inside the veritable interiors of stars. You are created out of carbon-based stardust. And here in this next image is a very close-up of the Horsehead Nebula. Almost looks like the viewer maxillofacial surgeon might like to view creation, wonder, awe, splendor, majesty, but above all, purpose. In this next image, appears to be a Picasso, but much better than a Picasso. Appears to be a Michelangelo, but much more profound than a Michelangelo. It's the veritable birth of stars. This whole series is on Genesis and relationship. And here God, in that, in that one incredible verse, and God created the heavens and the earth. In one majestic sweep, beloved, God goes and creates this veritable masterpiece. You see, God is the God of the infinite wisdom, is the God of the infinite care, is the God who signs off, as it were, every painting by name. In this next image, we see the Rosette Nebula, one of my beloved stellar maternity wards in which baby stars are being born. We're looking around five to 6,000 light years back in time. So in other words, the light from this nebula has taken some five to 6,000 years to reach our eyes, traveling at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second in vacuum. The size of the central bubble in your screen is around 65 light years. One light year is around 10 million, million kilometers. 
When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man, what is immense, that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man, that thou visitest him. In this next image are veritable pillars of creation, huge areas, almost like rising columns of cosmic dust. Again, the significance to this is as follows. God the creator, God the creator creates the heavens, creates the earth, but creates this for you to look upon it in awe, in wonder, and to sit at his feet and look up into his eyes, flowing with inestimable grace. I have no words when looking at this image, but to think of an essay entitled Nature by Ralph Waldo Emerson, who wrote, If the stars should appear one night in a thousand years, how would men believe and adore and preserve for many generations the remembrance of the city of God which has been shown? Eta Carina, seen here towards the left of the image in the constellation of Carina. All majesty, creation, pillars of cosmic stardust. You know, if we take a close-up of one of those little columns, it almost looks like a leopard in the next slide, right? Crossing the African uh, savanna, racing to meet its target. But again, without these pillars of cosmic dust, you and I would not be here. And then we come to God's creation of galaxies. Here we see a galaxy known as Messier 83. It's a collection of 100,000 million stars. Almost a million million stars. They're beautiful. These are the veritable building blocks of our cosmos. In fact, in the next image is another galaxy, or rather two galaxies which are interacting. Messier 51, NGC 5194 slash NGC 5195. Beauty, all dynamics. And that's what I love about the Creator, beloved, is that God is a dynamical God who cares for you in the now. He's not a distant God. He's a dynamical God who works not only in His creation in the whirlpool nebula seen on your screen, but who is intimately longing to have a dynamic relationship with you, just as he has a dynamic relationship with his creation. We move on to clusters of galaxies, billions upon billions of them. Galaxies, clusters of galaxies. But I'd like to conclude with uh, approximately two or three images of myself and others standing under the aurora borealis. And you can see here my hands are raised in awe and in wonder. And here I am having a relationship with my creator because I'm standing here in awe and in wonder, lost in wonder, and saying, oh, raising my hands and saying, oh my God, how great thou art. In fact, in our final image, you see the moon, you see a tree, you see a father, you see a child. But you see more than that, the child holding the hand of the father. Beloved, we live in a universe made and created by God. May God himself richly bless you. Wow, Professor Block. Thank you for sharing how God created for us to be in relationship that he knows us by name and that he masterfully crafted us. Isn't it amazing that God knows you and me and he did create us fearfully and wonderfully. And I wonder how do we live in this relationship? So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. God created us for him to flow, for his creativity, for his love to continue to be ministered in the world. This head-heart, art connection. I've got a friend. He's one of identical, identical, identical twins. 
So one day, when they were small, six, seven, eight years old, one of his brothers, his brother, went through a deep darkness, very depressed, three, four months, visibly. There's something visibly hindering him. So his parents get them together and say, seriously, what is wrong? And he says, I know, mom and dad, I know. And I know the truth. <laughs> what is the truth, they ask. He said, um, you adopted me. And they said, but your brother? No, 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 he's not adopted. He's family. He's your family. And they say, but you're, you look exactly like, a, you're identical. And for a moment, he forgot that he's in, created part of, with purpose and, and life and love. He did not feel I'm in. So how do we know that we are in? And I wonder if I can invite you for the time ahead for this year and after to make a huge effort to go to Jesus and say, I need to know you created me for purpose and passion and life to flow through me, to make an effort to go and sit with him and ask what happened when you intentionally created me and called me by name. Why did you do that? And may you forever and ever, in the depth of this journey, find the passion to share this with others and remind them that they are invited into this creation story of God who created intentionally you, fearfully and wonderfully. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that there's no accident when you decided we should be here, bearing your image, bearing your signature. May all of us be deeply aware of how you love us, Jesus our Lord. And may the love of our Lord Jesus, the grace of Jesus, the love of our Father, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen.